Volume data check to one, volume data to one. Let's put the pingvin on a Synology NAS. And I want to thank Trey for sending in a suggestion. I'm not sure that I'll be able to get to the other suggestion. That is a little bit more of a complicated install. But pingvin is a pretty cool application. If you don't know what it is, it's basically like WeTransfer. So you can just click on upload and then it will generate a link for you. So you can see here, pingvin, not sure that would be the generated link and you've got some security options here. I can add a password, max views. I think, I, yeah, you can set an expiration date, share files that way with anybody that you want. So it makes that process very easy. You know, you can also use something like Synology Drive. You've got a Synology NAS, but Pingvin is an awesome app to do. And who knows, maybe you want to set up apps on different programs, like or maybe or on different hardware, like a Pi or, you know, an Ubuntu server. So Pingvin is a great way of doing that. And it's pretty simple to set up. So let's click out of the demo and then let's go over to their GitHub, which if you cannot find, you just type in Pingvin GitHub into your search browser of choice. Maybe using Google, maybe using Woogle. I don't know. Maybe you looked at my Woogle tutorial. Should be the first GitHub that pops up by Stoneth. Stoneth, Stoneth 404. And if we scroll down, we can get the instructions for how to install. So installation with Docker recommended, download the docker-compose.yaml file, and then run docker-compose-up minus D. And the way that we do these are a little bit different on a Synology NAS. We could download this docker-compose.yaml, but a .yaml file is just a text file, and we can actually make that in our on our NAS very simply. And then run docker compose up minus D. We just hit a start button in Synology, and that's how that works. So let's go through these steps. So first, download the docker compose.yaml file. If we scroll up, we can see a list of files. This is everything that makes pingvin work. And then we've got this docker compose yaml file right here. So I'll click it. And then let me refresh. I don't know why I was getting all these weird buttons. But this is all that we need. So I'm going to copy and paste this guy. You can also, I think you can just click this copy raw file button also, and that'll copy everything. And then let's head over to our Synology NAS. And the only program that you need is Container Manager, which if you don't have, head over to the Package Center, type in Container Manager, and it will show up regardless of almost how badly you spell it. If it's not showing up for you in the App Store, that means that it is not supported on your model of Synology NAS, but maybe Google around and see if others have gotten it to work. So let's pop into Container Manager. And I'm going to scoot this over because I'll have to open up File Station soon. We're going to click on Project and then Create. And we're going to call this project Pingvin. You can call it whatever you want, though. You could call it Nextcloud and really confuse yourself, so I wouldn't do that. Let's just call it Pingvin. And then for Path, let's create a path for these files to live. So I'm going to go into File Station. And the files are not the files that you're uploading. This is just files that relate to the program of Pingvin. So you should have a Docker share. And then I am going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this guy then and as you can see as you can see I didn't delete my other two projects well, that's all right so we have a pingvin folder now I'm gonna set that path to that pingvin folder which again you can name whatever you want but I'd probably keep it simple so we'll do pingvin and then for source upload docker compose.yaml we are going to create a docker compose.yaml and we'll just paste in all that type that we got from the github page right here for their docker compose.yaml file so the instructions we're pretty clear that's really all that you have to do, but I do want to make another change and that is under ports. So this is how we're going to access Pingvin, which is just a web application. Basically, you're going to type in either the name of your NAS dot local and then colon, whatever this number is. So in this case, it's 3000, or you can do the IP address of your NAS colon 3000 and that will work. But the problem is 3000 is used by a lot of programs. So I don't like to use 3000. I'm just going to change this to 20,000. That's a good number that no other program uses typically. So we'll access it at port 20,000. Do not change the second number though. So typically if you see this format of a number colon number under ports, that means this is the port that we need on your Synology NAS open. This is for Docker and you don't have to worry about it. So leave it as is. And then it's looking for a volume. So it's looking for a folder called data and data images. So let's go ahead and create those folders or we're going to get an error. So in our pingvin folder, we're going to create a folder called data. And then it is also looking for an images folder inside of that data folder. So I will do that. If this is a little bit confusing to you, let me right click data. You don't have to do this. I'm going to click properties and I'm going to copy this file location. So this period data means this period is basically shorthand for wherever I'm at, I'm looking for a data folder. So this is the same thing as typing in that full that full file path, which you can also use. And then data images, you know, it's just looking for a data folder and then an images folder within that folder, wherever it is. So it would be the pretty much the same thing up top, except that it's going to end with images. So that's how that works. You can format that however you want. Personally, I like to use the period forward slash because if I'm ever moving around Docker containers, it can make life a little bit easier. 
There are a few optionals down here that I'm not going to do. I don't really know anything about Clam AV, so I'm going to leave Clam AV as that. But this is pretty much good to go. So I'm going to click Next, and then I am going to leave the web station thing unchecked. I'll click Next, and then start the project once it is created, and I will click Done. And this should be a pretty quick and painless install. Once it's done installing everything, we're looking for an exit code zero, and that means that it's a success. Also pop up a pretty blatant message that it was a, su a success. So don't need to know what code zero means. And there we go, we got the exit code zero, and then we have hopefully a more explicit message saying it was a success. There we go, Project Pingvin was successfully built. So I'm gonna close out of here, and I can see the project is going. We've got one container up. If I click on containers, I can see I've got the pingvin, pingvin share one container going, and we're good. To access this, if you forgot what number you put in, you can click on project, double click pingvin, pingvin, pingvin. I hope I'm saying that right. I keep wanting to say penguin. Click on YAML configurations, and then we can see our penguin port right here. So in my case, I'm using 20,000. Basically, however, I'm accessing my NAS up here. So I'm using nightvision.local because the name of my Synology NAS is night vision. So I can type in nightvision.local and then colon 20,000 will get me where I want to be. And I also need to make sure I'm probably going to have to change HTTPS to HTTP. So let me try this and see if it works. So that will not work. I'm just going to change that beginning to say instead of HTTPS, it's just going to say HTTP. And here we go. We got Pingvin up and running. I can sign in, sign up. Um, let me see here. Can I sign up? Username, volume data 21, volume data 21 at gmail.com. That's how Trey reached me. And then the password, I make a very long secure. Oh, it's got to be at least eight. Okay. Ooh, it'll let you put in a pretty insecure password. All right. But here we go. We're in. And then I can start uploading files and sharing them however I want. And Pingvin is good to go. So there you go. That is how you install Pingvin. If you didn't want to use your Synology NASA's name, by the way, if you're having trouble accessing this, there's a couple things you need to know. One, on your Synology NAS, because this is, this is going to get a little bit trickier. You can use your IP address. Let me close out of here. If you click up here on widgets and then make sure system health is checked, you can see your IP address right here. There is a chance it's one of these other LAN ports, but it's probably LAN 1. I think it depends on where you connected your Ethernet cable. So in my case, I could type in 192.168.86.60 colon 20,000, and that will also bring me to Pinvin. Two, make sure you are using HTTP and not HTTPS. And then three, make sure that your firewall has 20,000 open. If you're using a Synology firewall for some reason, you just need to make sure that port 20,000 is open. So that's basically it, but you kind of have another issue with ping then. This is why it's a little bit tricky for me to do a tutorial on this, and that is you can't really share this with anyone. Right now, Pingvin is only available on your local area network. So if somebody is on your same network right now, you could upload a file, give them that link, and it will work. Let me see here. All right, let's try to upload a file and see what happens. We're going to upload a file. So I'm going to click Upload. I've got my ping test file here. And then I've got a couple of options. I can click on share. I can generate a link. I can add a name and a password. I can make a description for people. Hey, if somebody gets this, I'm going to say you've been hacked. But for the name, I'm going to say not a virus. And people will think it's not a virus, but they've been hacked. So let's share this file. You can see it uploads and done. And then I've got a link. But You'll notice an issue here. It just says localhost 3000. Now, if I type in localhost, I'm on my MacBook right now. So localhost to my MacBook is just going to take me to the IP address of my MacBook, and this is not going to work. And as you know, Pingvin is also not on port 3000. So we need to change that. I'm going to click Done, and then come up here to Administration, and then Configuration. And you've got so many options here. You can change your app name. I can change the VD21 share. I can switch this app URL. And I think this is what will fix that issue here. So I'm going to type in nightvision.local colon 20,000 because that is the IP address that I'm using. So I'm just going to use whatever is up here. You might just have your own IP address and that is fine, but that is the blurb that you want. And you'll notice I'm using HTTP and not HTTPS because that will not work. And then show homepage, that's all fine. You can switch up the logo if you want. I don't really have a volume data 21 logo though, so I'm not going to do it. Plenty of other options here, but I'm going to click Save. You can explore all those options on your own. And then if we go back, let me go to Share Management. Look at all these files that I tried to upload and failed. All right, so not a virus. If I click that link now, hey, that's right. So if I copy that, then paste it in the web browser, 
Check it out, not a virus, you've been hacked. There's your note. And there you go, that's how Pingvin works. So your other issue is, obviously, people on your network can access it, but people who are not on your network cannot access this. So you're going to have to figure out how to set up a reverse proxy. You might be able to use Synology's um, built-in version of that under, where is it, under Control Panel, External Access. Their version of DDNS, maybe that will work out for you. I don't know if Quick Connect would work in this instance, but yeah. You're just going to have to figure out a way of getting this stuff out to the internet for other people to be able to download. So I hate to leave it on that because I know that's a really important part of this and it's a little bit tricky, but getting into, I've got a couple of videos on how reverse proxies work and there are a lot better videos than what I can provide on how to use a reverse proxy only because of the security implications. I'd rather you be hearing that from, say, a Space Rex or Wonder Tech. They're probably a little bit better for that sort of thing. But see if maybe you can get it to work with Quick Connect or Synology's built-in DDNS. That might be able to work for you. But there you go. You've got your own built-in version of WeTransfer, sort of. Look at the VD21 share. Don't name it. Don't name it after mine. You're going to confuse people. So hopefully that was helpful to you. And thank you for the subscriber suggestion. Good luck to you guys.